Now you might notice that in the title of this review, I decided to do something that's a little bit different than usual. Now, under normal circumstances, I would just put in the title of the movie and then follow it with Animat's Classic Reviews or Animat's Reviews, or I would just switch things around. But for this special instance, instead of putting in the title of the movie, I instead put in capital letters, THE WORST ANIMATED FILM EVER. Now, some of you might be wondering, why did I do that? Why this change? Well, actually, I have a goal with this name change. I want it so that whenever anybody would ever see a photo or a glimpse of this movie, I want them to recognize that this is the worst animated film ever. And the movie that I am talking about is called Where the Dead Go to Die. Now, for some of you that know this movie, you might be in shock about this. You might be wondering, why the heck did you decide to review this? Like, are you insane? Well, I didn't do it willingly. Like, it wasn't my decision. This was actually brought to me by a Patreon request brought to me by Eric, or as he calls himself, The Tech Critic. Now, with this movie, in order to get you guys a bit of an idea of what you're getting into, allow me to show you a bit of clips that came from the trailer of this film. So with that said, I think you guys can understand why this is going to be a vlog style review. Now, um, let me just start off by saying that when it comes to movies that are considered the worst animated films ever, I haven't really seen a lot of them to be very honest. Like, I do know about movies like uh, the Video Brinquito films like Rat Tattooing, Food Fight, or Titanic The Legend Goes On, you know, uh, the one with the rapping dog. Like, I know them very well, but I haven't really seen those movies. The most that I got is mostly through reviews like The Nostalgia Critic. Um, however, that doesn't mean I haven't seen any movies that are considered the worst. Like, I have seen a couple of them myself. Uh, the two of which that I have seen are Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2 and The Legend of the Titanic. And so far, those two were pretty much tied for the worst animated film that I have ever seen. But then everything changed when I encountered Where the Dead Go to Die. Now, if I could be very honest, like, before uh, the tech critic came in and suggested to me this on Patreon, I have absolutely never heard of this movie before. Like, I was extremely naive. It's like, what's Where the Dead Go to Die? And the only description he gave me was that this is a movie worse than Food Fight. And beforehand, I always thought that Food Fight was, like, reigning supreme as the worst animated film ever. So I never knew about it. And like when people thought, like when people realized that I was going to review it, they were in shock. They were scared. They were like Lord Voldemort. Like it, th this movie is like Lord Voldemort. It was the animated film that should not be named. So after watching it, oh God. Yeah, I think Eric is right. This, it like, I haven't seen Food Fight, but I'm pretty sure this is worse than Food Fight, my god! So, how is this the worst animated film ever? Well, let's find out. And even if this is a vlog style review, I will, I will still be doing the traditional format that I usually do. I will still talk about the story, the animation, and the characters in their own separate things. So, let's start this off with the story. Now, interestingly enough, this is actually an anthology horror film. We pretty much look into the lives of three different people, uh, the first of which is a boy named Tommy, and then we got this junkie guy, and then we got uh, this deformed kid named Ralph who has this Siamese twin on his head. 
But, oh god, here's the biggest issue. There is no story in this film. There's just absolutely none. I mean, the first one with Tommy is pretty much like he hangs out with this dog named Labby and then crazy messed up things just happen. And then we got this junkie guy, I, I, his name escapes me, but he pretty much, he just goes killing off people and then like he would just extract like this juice coming out of their brain, which is apparently their memory, and he would inject it in himself and then messed up things happen. And the third one, that's the closest thing. The third story is the closest thing to ever be, like to have an actual plot. Because the thing is that, like I said, Ralph is this deformed kid with a Siamese twin, like on the side of his head, and he has this crush on a little girl, and like, messed up things happen. And okay, so I, I guess you guys are starting to notice this theme, like, uh, of messed up things happen. And that's the thing, that's the only thing that actually connects these three stories together. It's just these, this random messed up things keep on happening and like, I, I apologize in advance, but like you're gonna hear me say messed up a lot in this review, but it's like, there's no actual story. There's no actual message that it's trying to convey. This is like, about 90% of this movie is just a series of like crazy images that are meant for like absolute shock value or like just, it makes no sense. Like every single thing that you see, like it's, it's near impossible. It's actually, it's no, not near impossible. It's impossible to follow what the heck is going on because after every single thing that it shows us, like, you're just left there asking yourself, did that either, did that just happen? Or what the fridge just happened? It's either one of those two. And it never ends, it never stops. It just keeps on jumping from one shocking imagery to another without any purpose, without any logic, without any explanation at all. It's just a series of shock value that's never answered to why or no purpose whatsoever. It's just messed up beyond belief. There's no structure and like even as an anthology film, nothing connects together. It's just throwback. Like the most that it ever happens is just throwbacks to what happened to last time. It's like, hey, like, like sometimes, sometimes you'll be in the second story. It's like, hey, remember this kid? Well, like here's what's happening with him. Just a bunch of random stuff happening. The only real connection that there is with the three stories is one character that often appears in the movie, and his name is Labby. When we're gonna get to the characters, oh, let me tell you about freaking Labby. He's he's pretty much my new nightmare now. Okay, but. That's pretty much all I can say about the story is that it's just, there's no, there's basically no story. There, there's just none. It's just a series of shocking imagery. That's it. All right, so with that done, let's move on to the animation. Okay, now this is the reason why I'm doing this in a vlog style review. The last time I've actually done this was almost two years ago when I had to do my review of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. Now, the reason why I had to do a vlog style there was because the animation was so bad that I had to get, I pretty much did myself and anybody with a taste of animation a favor and pretty much not show any, any bits of horrible animation they did there. It was just so bad, it was godforsaken unwatchable. But in this case, this is actually really different. The reason why I'm doing a vlog style review is because whatever's happening in there, I cannot show it. Like, I don't think I'm even allowed to post it on the internet, let alone on sites like YouTube or Blip or whatever. Like, I just can't. It's just way too messed up to be ever seen. In fact, here's the thing, allow, look, all right. I actually made a list of some of the messed up things that actually happen in this movie. All right, like here, here's the thing. All right, we got 
Okay, here, okay, like, I titled this List of Messed Up Things in Where the Dead Go to Die. And here's how it goes. Um, it features an unborn baby yanked out of the vagina, or most of the time, if you ever see an unborn baby, it still has a cord attached to his mother. Uh, limbs yanked out of bodies like a pair of legs and a penis. Guess which one is on screen? Uh, let's see. Tons of messed up corpses. Oh, God, this movie does so many things to a dead body. Like, it doesn't just leave it dead. Oh, just, oh, God. Bestiality with a little boy on top of his dead parents. That, that's a thing. I wish I'd never, like, somebody did this. Somebody thought this is an idea to put in a movie. On-screen killings, mostly stabbings, I'm sure, like, you would see that commonly in movies, but these ones are, like, brutal. Maggots coming out of every face hole of corpses. Well, okay, maybe not all of it. They, they mostly just come out of the mouths and they come out of the eyes. Like, I know, like, they, none come out of the nose or ears, but I don't think that changes the fact that it's terrible. VERY UNCOMFORTABLE AMOUNT OF CHILD PORNOGRAPHY! And like, this actually, like, the bestiality thing I mentioned before, that counts as child porn as well! I mean, it is a little boy banging a freaking dog! Uh, what else we got? An orgy from hell! A, the same little boy that just had sex with the freaking dog, he also French kissed the decapitated head of his mom with maggots coming out of her mouth. And then finally, many traditional and creative ways of child abuse. And that's, you know, that's actually the worst thing. You know, the worst thing about this list is that those are the things I can describe. This is not everything. This is not even half of what happens in this movie. The rest, like I said, it's undescribable. It's just this messed up imagery that would either come from hell or like anyone's deepest nightmares. It's just like inexplainable and you're just standing there going like, what is this? It's like, how, like, it, these are things that should not be seen. Like the, this is the factor. It's so bad. Like the, the factor that it is so bad it's just the concept of these things actually made in an animated feature. I mean, this can actually be like extremely well made. This can be beautifully crafted by masters at Pixar and it wouldn't change the difference that it's terrible because like, the freaking this, like they, they did this, they did things like this. And oh God, if you want me to talk about the quality Oh, good God. Here's an interesting fact. Here's an interesting fact. The animation, believe it or not, is actually done by one guy, and that is the creator of his movie, Jimmy Screamer Claws. Does that sound like a fake name? Well, of course it does. I mean, it's not like it's a real, it's not a real name. Of course, nobody's actually called Jimmy Screamer Claws. Like, I'm sure he uses that fake name in order to protect his identity from the police. It's just, oh my god, the quality, I cannot consider this bad or terrible or anything like that. It's freaking unfinished. That's the thing. I mean, like, okay, guys, do you know the Dingle production movies? You know those, like, really, really, really bad Disney ripoffs that, like, it's barely animation, there's barely any quality of voice acting or barely quality of anything? The, imagine though, imagine that quality of animation. Instead, you just turn that into th into like computer animation, and that's basically it. Like, it's unfinished. This is like, oh good god, not even like, gee, like good god, anime, like computer animation from the 80s. Don't even look as bad as this. And bear in mind, this is a movie made in 2012. This is the same year as movies like, like, like Wrecked Ralph. And oh god, like, here's the thing, the backgrounds, they look horrendous. The, the, 
like, the design of the characters themselves, I highly doubt Jimmy actually did this by himself. I'm sure he just downloaded some random templates from whatever website he found or from whatever animation software he got. Like, I I'm sure it ain't him. And the character animation, it's glitchy. That's the best way to describe it. It's freaking glitchy. I mean, you see, like, hair coming out of arms. You see, like, like, th like people put their arms in their heads. It's just, there's no sense of, like, it's not that there's no sense of anatomy. There's, like, oh, God, they don't feel like real people. It's, like, well, it's, like, really bad, badly rendered characters. It's, that's the only way I can describe the animation in terms of quality. It's just godforsaken unfinished. But the things that they do is just messed up beyond belief. And okay, now with that said and done, let's move on to the characters. And I can pretty much, it's a safe bet to say that there are no likable characters. These characters are not likable in the slightest. In fact, the most that you'll ever get is that you'll be scared of these characters because you never want, like, you never want to see these characters again because if you do they are going to be messed up beyond belief like like oh like oh my god like they have so much bad intentions they are like all these characters are just dumb as a brick they're easily do do what they're told and they end like that's that's the thing they're they're like zombified they end up do like there, there's practically nobody with a brain here. They just do as they're told. I was like, okay, let me just go see this messed up thing or let me just do this messed up thing. Rather it be like freaking Tommy from the first story, the drug addict from the from the first one or like the ho that, that hooker in the second story or even freaking Ralph. Like they're just easily influential to do the most messed up thing. They have no sense of morality whatsoever. But there is this one character who knows what he was do who knows what he's doing. And oh god, his intentions are freaking evil. I have a new nightmare and his name is Labby. Now, Labby is what connects this entire movie. What connects these three stories into one. Labby is pretty much this this black dog with red eyes and like he would tell them to do all sorts of messed up things thinking that they're gonna be good like he really takes advantage over the fact that these characters are idiotic as hell and like they end up doing whatever hell spawn thing it's literally this is satan's dog it's literally freaking satan's dog i mean like here's just one little example like actually i'm sure from this list like lobby is responsible for most of the things that actually happen like in the first like here's an example in the first story Labby just pretty much tells Tommy that apparently like his mom is pregnant and sh apparently the baby inside is the Antichrist what does he do he pretty much he re yanks out the baby from her mom from her mom's stomach then afterwards he pretty much kills her off and then like he goes to the dad rips out his dick and like pretty much dead and like Tommy is a bit sad and what it, what does he tell tell him oh I know how to bring bring back your parents just screw me in the freaking butt and then right afterwards he disappears and I don't know if that's what actually happens but apparently he disappears and it turns out that Tommy is actually screwing the corpse of his mother so that's another one I should have added is possible necrophilia with a freaking minor, which is another category in the child porn thing. Like, oh my god, I think like, and another one I think that's really messed up beyond belief. The second place person that takes the title is the, uh, is um, this little girl, there's this little girl named Sophia. Her dad, okay, Sophia is the little girl that Ralph has a crush on. And Sophia has this family and they're like major messed up hillbillies. The dad, it, her dad is the one that's responsible for all the frickin' child porn. He has all these VHSs of, of little Sophia doing just messed up porn. And like, 
You even see this happening. It's just, oh God, it's unwatchable. It's godforsaken intolerable. Like how can anyone, how can Jimmy accept this to actually happen? But, oh, and another thing I really want to mention, like an extra bit that I want to add about the characters is that the acting, holy Jesus, it's terrible. Like, it, there is bad, there like, now the common ground of bad acting here is just like playing flat out bad. But then when it gets like the worst, oh God, it is like, the, like this is like horrible to the point where it's unimaginable, but somehow it manages to do it. It is just... Do you even know where, where, where babies come from, T Tommy? No, I tried to ask my parents, but they wouldn't tell me. It, it, it's like, the, that's the thing with these characters. There are no likable characters. Whenever you see anybody coming back into the screen, like you are scared, because you know bad stuff is gonna happen, especially with frickin' Labby. Labby is the warning sign that the real messed up things are gonna happen. Okay, let me just calm down for a sec. You know, when it comes, when, when I would be faced with a bad movie or a bad animated feature, you know, I, normally I would just describe words like bad, terrible, disgrace, that often comes out, horrendous, stupid, idiotic, or whatever, I can't even describe for this movie. Like, I can't even say any of, the, any of these words. It's the only way to describe where the dead go to die. It's unholy. It's godforsaken unholy. It's unholy. It's inhumane. This is a movie that should be illegal. I don't know how Jimmy Screamer Claus did it, but he actually succeeded in making the first ever animated snuff film. This is the kind of movie that, this should be illegal. Like when watching this, I feel like I need to get rid of this immediately because it's just godforsaken elite because like, it's, it feels illegal. These are things I should never watch in my entire lifetime. And by the way, now before I move on, let me give you a bit of interesting facts about Jimmy Screamer Claus himself about this movie. Now, like, and there are two things about him. Now, I'm sure some of you are probably watching this thinking, it was like, oh my god, what the hell is he thinking? Oh, he must be on drugs or something, you know? Like, you know, like everybody uses that comment before on whatever messed up thing they see. In the case of where the dead go to die, it has actually been confirmed by Jimmy himself that he was in fact on drugs when making this. He did actually confirm in a commentary that he was in fact on drugs making where the dead go to die and you know what's the worst thing about all this the worst thing like with this list and all that stuff it's his intention i don't know if this is originally or what it's supposed to be he want this apparently jimmy wanted this to be a comedy this is supposed to be something to laugh at like like, here, let me give you, like, the child porn, the bestiality, the orgy from hell, the child abuse. This is all for freaking laughs? I don't know what else to say. Like, I'm seriously at a loss of words. I can't say what the hell is wrong with you or are you, are you messed up in the brain? Because the answer is yes. He was, like, he was, like, messed up on drugs when make, when making this. And it clearly shows! Okay, now, let me just, oh boy, ay, ay, ay. let me just right now give you, let me just give you the rating. And this is, of course, like as the absolute worst animated film ever, like it pretty much gets the lowest rating that you can ever get in, a, in any of my reviews or whatever. The story, one out of 10 for the factor that there's barely any story in it. Instead, it's just, 
a series of messed up images one after the one after another without any purpose without any explanation whatsoever um animation one out of ten like never mind the qual like outside of the quality like the quality is horrendous beyond belief but what's even worse than the quality is the things that happen. The fact that Jimmy had to animate this and I didn't, how the heck can he live with himself? The fact that he animated all this messed up imagery, including freaking child porn. And then the characters, one out of 10, of course, I never want to see any of these characters again. They scare me, especially freaking Labby. Oh God. Please never show me these characters again. Like, I like I never want like oh good god they they horrify me. No, nothing good can ever come out of these characters. I never want to see them again. So in total, Where the Dead Go to Die gets a one out of ten. Of course, with the animat seal of garbage. Just one big animat seal of gar garbage covering this entire movie. Oh good god, now. Now the thing with this review, this is not only a review, this is a warning. This is a warning to anybody watching this. Never watch this movie. Whatever you do, don't go watch Where the Dead Go to Die. This thing should be banned. This should be illegal. If you ever find Where the Dead Go to Die, rather it be on anywhere, if it's on a computer, delete it, put it in the trash, empty the trash, make sure your computer is clean from it. If you actually see a DVD or Blu-ray copy of it, burn it with fire. Just completely burn it so it never sees the freaking light of day. And you know, like, and the worst thing is, I just cannot understand the fact that, that there are people who actually like this. They legit think this is a good film. Like, okay, here's the thing. You know, I'm usually the kind of, you know, I'm normally the kind of guy that I would respect your opinion if you respect mine. Like, you know, if we respect each other's opinions, we understand each other. Uh, you know, we both have good arguments about it. Let bygones be bygones. But if you legitimately think that Where the Dead Go to Die is actually a good movie, or you actually like what's happening in there? You're a freak! You're just a sick, messed up freak! I'm sorry, but this is true! Freaking wake up! You need some serious psych- some serious mental help! Go find- go find some freaking help! Or like, you must be on godforsaken heavy drugs! Like, get out of it! Go get a freaking intervention! Like, if you're gonna counter-argue with me, this list alone would make whatever you say freaking invalid! So, this is pretty much my conclusion. No matter what, even if you are morbidly curious, never do it! Don't ever watch Where the Dead Go to Die! If you decide to do it, I swear to God, you will forever regret it! And I'm, I apologize for this, I will sympathize with you, but it's your own fault. I warned you, never watch this movie. If there's one thing to take out of this review, never watch Where the Dead Go to Die. And if there is one final thing I want to say is to the tech critic himself, I understand that you have good intentions, I'm, I'm glad that you want to support my work. You know, I'm happy with all this, but just the, the ideology of suggesting to a person, from one, one person to another, to watch Where the Dead Go to Die. What were you thinking? Seriously, what were you thinking, dude? But, you know, if I could be very honest, at this point, I just want to move on. Like, after seeing that, I, I just, I rather want to move on with my life and I want to pretend like I have never seen this movie. I just want to forget it and just move on. Like, I want to go back to my standards of what is usually considered a bad animated film. Like, anything that would come out in theaters that comes from the Weinstein Company or Sony Pictures Animation. I just, 
I just want to go back to that time because it seems so simpler. And you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to forget about all this stupid crap of where the dead go to die and move on with my life. But anyways, that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So that's pretty much the end of this where the dead go to die review. And um, let's actually move on with more happier news. And I know the next review that I'm going to do is going to be much, much better. And it's actually, once again, another Patreon request. No offense, Eric, but it's going to be someone a little more sane. And this one actually comes from Luna Jackson. So, um, if you guys want to be like Eric and Luna, and if you guys want to go and support my work and get some awesome rewards at, on the side, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. So, what is it that Luna suggests to me? Like, it's for sure going to be something better. Well, of course it is. However, it is something that I'm a little bit unfamiliar with. Now, to, to be very honest, when it comes to these games, I have never really played them. The most that I've played in that kind of style is actually L.A. Noir, but, like, maybe I can get into it. Like, after watching this review, like, after watching the movie, maybe I'll get into the games. We'll see. It'll be a nice introduction to the uh, franchise. But before we actually get into that review, it's time that we actually move on to the animation hat. Yes, this is gonna be, I'm gonna do a little bit of a new format if I ever get like repetitive, uh, like continuous Patreon requests one after another. Um, it'll be a guarantee that at least once a month I will be drawing from the animation hat. So, uh, in the middle of the month, whenever I get, like, a continuous line of Patreon requests, I will draw from the animation hat. Uh, this is actually from a special request from, uh, well, a, a friend of mine. To be very honest, I don't think you guys would ever understand. But anyways, if you guys would like to suggest an animated film you would like me to review and I would put it in the animation hat, then write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com. Alright, so, you know, no matter what, it's gonna be, ah, here we go. That's actually pretty quick. Um, actually, no, you put, you go back here. You go back here. It's actually pretty quick. No matter what, this is gonna be much better than Where the Dead Go to Die, no matter what it is. So the next review shall be... Oh boy. Well, we're still gonna keep the, we're still gonna keep the theme of like really weird movies. Now, if you guys recall the story of Richard Williams when he made Where the Dead Go to Die, this is one of his projects that he worked on in order to finance for the thief. 